At first glance, it may seem odd that our first video on a series on media communication is titled Character and Self-Awareness. But the truth is media isn't just this, uh, you know, abstract idea that exists around us. Media is something that we engage in today in our very personal lives uh, over and over again. It's a very much an integral part of our lives in modern society. And not only that, but the truth is we have a great deal of control over media right? Of our own personal media, meaning what we put out there, uh, how we frame things, the, the image that we put out there, uh, how we, how we uh, treat other people and how we engage using social media. We have uh, such a, an incredible degree of control over that, um, that media has to be on our mind at all times. And the, uh, the, the way that we engage in media, has to be an integral part of our communication uh, awareness. And so our really our understanding of media communication starts with, in these days, our own use of an image in media. So that is why the very first video in this series on media communication is character and self-awareness. So we're going to dive into each of these topics independently a little bit, uh, even though they dovetail quite a bit. So let's start with character. And uh, when we do that, I always like to start off by defining what it is we're talking about. What do we mean by that? So for us, and specifically in, in regards to um, character, what is character? Well, character is a word that's derived from the Greek word and, and notion of character. And what they meant by that is a stamping tool. Originally, character was a, a word used for a stamping tool, a tool that was used to, to uh, make an indelible mark there. It makes a distinctive mark. And the word evolved to, to include that. And over time, though, it's come to uh, to symbolize or, or to mean a symbol or imprint on the soul. So uh, where originally it was a stamping tool used to leave a mark in some sort of material, whether that's you know leather or steel or whatever, um, and leave that distinctive mark character now has come to symbolize the symbol or imprint on our soul. It's who we are. And I think Alan Williams uh, said it very, very well when he said character is who you are when no one is looking. That's the real mark of character is that um, character comes through us when nobody's really paying attention. Who are we when at our core, when nobody else is really watching us? So more specifically, let's dive into what we mean by Christian character and what character means to us as Christians, as followers of Christ. Um, first of all, we need to understand that, that, that character begins with Christ. Character initiates with Christ. Without Christ, we don't have <laughs> Christian character, really. Christian character begins with Christ, who then, uh, as, as it, uh, as we're told in, in 2 Corinthians, Paul tells us, 2 Corinthians 5 17 says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that person is a new creation. The old has gone, the new is here. So when we come to know Christ as our Savior, when we accept that salvation, the slate is wiped clean. We become new people and we take on the character of Christ. Theoretically, that's the idea is that we become then Christ-like and take on the character of Christ. We also know that that character for Christians is a product of the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, it's really not possible for us to, to come even anywhere near approaching the character of Christ, right? That's the, the blessing that we have as, as, as Jesus told us in, in, in John. Um, verses 15 through 17, he said, if you love me, keep my commands and I will ask the father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth. He goes on to say then later on in John 14, 26, he says, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. So uh, Christian character begins with Christ, with becoming Christ-like, first of all, accepting that salvation, clearing that slate, cleaning the slate, wiping it clean, and and becoming um, dwelt within by the Spirit of Christ and taking on his character, really. And then it's aided and is a product, then, of the Holy Spirit dwelling within us and, and guiding us and leading us, which is also, again, a gift from God. And uh, and so um, it allows us to be as close in character to Christ as we as we can be. Christian character is also revealed to us in scripture. So what, what is, you know, if we're defining Christian character, what does that mean? Um, it's revealed to us in scripture. We can look at Romans, for example, five, one through five says, therefore, since we've been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, 
through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand, and to boast in the hope of the glory of God, not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings. Here's where we learn character. We glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our, our hearts through the Holy Spirit who's been given to us. So then again, we have that connection between, so what is character? Character is something that's derived uh, as we learn to abide with Christ through perseverance. You know, it comes from suffering, it develops perseverance. Perseverance develops that character in, in knowing and understanding what it means to be Christ-like in a sense. And that brings us hope. And all of that comes through the Holy Spirit. We can also look at Second Peter verses one, or sorry, chapter one, verses five through eight, where it says, "For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness mutual affection, and to mutual affection love. For if you possess these qualities, in increasing measure." They will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So what do we need to do to develop a Christ-like character, a Christian character? We need to, to add, in addition to our faith, we need to add goodness and knowledge and self-control and perseverance and so forth to develop these qualities that we need in our lives to, to display Christian character. So we need to understand finally that Christian character is more than just morality. It's more than just knowing and doing right versus wrong. It's, it's you know, uh, we know that, that being Christ-like has moved beyond that. It's not just doing the right things or thinking the right things. It's acting in that way. It's showing love. It's showing compassion and, and just um, displaying to the best of our abilities um, the, the same qualities that we would have seen uh, with Christ and that Christ would have us display. So, Okay, so Christian character begins with Christ. It is accessed through and, and guided by the Holy Spirit. It is revealed to us in Scripture, and we can learn more about it there in, in a variety of different areas within Scripture. And, and it's grounded in understanding that it's more than just morality. It moves beyond just morality and into that Christ-like behavior, Christ-like attitude, and Christ-like way of living. So character relates to our, our usage and access of media in today's world in the sense that, you know, again, we have all these choices about how we display ourselves, how we treat other people, uh, what we let people see of us and, and the image that we put out there, much like, you know, go back to this image here. And uh, so our character really uh, serves as a primary force in um, how we utilize media. Um, and, and the, the uh, images and, and the personality that we put on display um, will be derived from our character. We need to keep in mind that our character is displayed just as much through media as it is in any other form of life. And so we have an obligation then to uh, to represent ourselves there using the Christian character that, uh, that you know, derives from Christ and is guided by the Holy Spirit and so forth. Uh, all of this kind of really comes back to, in some ways, self-awareness. This idea of um, who are we, how do we know who we are, and, and how does that impact our um, relationship with others? So let's talk a little bit about self-awareness then, of, of you know, and its impact on social media and, and use of media in general. So what do we mean by self-awareness? Well, first of all, it's very simply just a conscious knowledge of one's character, emotions, desires, and motivations. It's really a thorough understanding of who you are and hopefully an accurate reflection of who you are. So we need to, to build upon the self-awareness and, and take self-awareness from lots of different areas and, uh, and be able to um, identify accurately who we are and what that means to us and what that means to our, our place in the world and our relationship with others. We need to also understand that self-awareness is not the same as self-absorption. We're not talking here about narcissism. We're not talking about placing yourself at the center of the world. We're talking about having the understanding of who you are and what impact that has on not only your own life, but your representation of Christ and your relationship with others and, and your relationship with God and so forth, as we will talk about. Perhaps most importantly, we need to keep in mind what Ann Landers, the, the old com columnist, said, know yourself. Don't accept your dog's admiration as conclusive evidence that you are wonderful. It's important for us to take time 
to do self-examination, to be aware of who we are and to really have a thorough understanding of ourselves and not just accept our dogs or anybody else's or anything else's um, evidence uh, and that, uh, that of who we are, that we need to know this for ourselves. So why is this important? First of all, it's important in terms of understanding ourselves, as I've mentioned a couple of times now, just having that self-awareness, that self-knowledge of who we are and a thorough understanding of ourselves and and uh, and just just again knowing ourselves and being aware of that also understanding our relationship to others we most likely don't live in a vacuum right we live with other people we live with our family and our friends and it's just the people around us in society and so what we do has an impact on others we are part of that larger system so we need to be aware of ourselves and how um, our own decisions, how our own behaviors, how our own choices are affecting those around us and how it affects our relationship um, with others in general, other people. We also need to be aware of, uh, of ourselves um, in, in understanding what our relationship is to God, who we are in relationship to God and, and, and being aware of um, the implications that that has for us, but uh, the, the responsibilities, but also the, the blessings that come with that. And just having a self-awareness of being God made, you know, God, God created and, and, and being, you know, a child of God and just being, having that awareness and how that impacts who we are and how we can see ourselves. So what can we do to then grow in our self-awareness? How can we become more self-aware? Well, specifically, again, in a Christian sense, I want to suggest to you that there are a couple of things that we can do and should do to grow in our self-awareness. And the first is to see ourselves as God, God's creation. To understand that we live not only in relationship with God, but that we are created by God um, for his purpose, for his joy, um, and that, uh, that he, he is, you know, the reason for our being, um, but we are also uh, created for a reason and, and created um, for his enjoyment and his um, blessing. Um, so we need to see ourselves as God's creation, make that a, a, a central part of our self-awareness is, is that we are um, created by, loved by, chosen by God um, for the purpose that he has for us. We also need to be able to discern our gifts and blessings. We need to be able to discern our gifts and blessings to, again, identify what is it that God has provided for us? What is it that God has, has chosen for us? What, what is it that he has gifted us with? We can grow in our self-awareness by understanding the gifts that we have, the, the blessing, the, you know, the, the tools that he's provided for us um, and the, the, the sort of the, so that we can do the work that he has laid out for us. And also the blessings that he bestows upon us. We can grow in our self-awareness in terms of understanding um, how God is blessing us, how he's working in our lives. We can also uh, then just abide in Christ. You know, character is, is derived from Christ, as we talked about before. It comes through that, that salvation. The slaves wipe clean. He comes and dwells within us, provides us with the Holy Spirit. And we can just abide in him. We can just, as he said, remain in him. He, as he says in, in John 15, verse 4, remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain on the vine. Of course, this is when he's talking about, I'm the vine and, and uh, for the branches. And the fr so uh, neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. So we can't be who we are meant to be unless we are able to abide in Christ. So we can grow in our self-awareness by just remaining in him. Just understanding that we are, we, are, we are imbued with the Spirit because of our salvation through Christ. And we can just remain in that, abide in that, and let that be a part of our lives and our self-awareness. So as Christians, those are things that are central to developing our self-awareness. Again, what does all of this have to do with, uh, with media communication? Let me come back to that real quick again. We are who we, you know, represent ourselves to be on media and how we access media and how we treat others using media. Uh, and not only the TV shows that we watch and, and stream and so forth, but, um, you know, how are we representing ourselves and how are we treating others on social media? Uh, how are we using that to the benefit of others and to benefit of God? And, and is our relationship, um, our, our Christian relationship and Christian being represented effectively in that area as well? And just through our behaviors and our, not just, you know, what we post and things, but again, how we treat others and, and just our overall use of media. 
really just like anything else in life, um, this is all impacted by our character and our self-awareness, our, our core values of who we are and our behaviors that we display and, and, and the understanding that we have of who we are, not just to ourselves, but in relationship to others and in relationship to God. And, and so I think a f thorough understanding and, and effective use and, and, uh, and uh, engagement with media starts with knowing ourselves, knowing our character, and being aware of who we are. If you have questions about this or anything else related to, to personal media communication, please feel free to email me. I'd be happy to engage with you in that way, and, and I look forward to hearing from you there. In the meantime, I hope you will do some self-examination, identifying who am I, what am I aware of myself, and, and you know, engaging and developing those self-awareness skills so that we can be more effective and, and, and more um, fruitful, in a sense, in using and understanding media.